I get a lot of Linklater vibes in this room alone, man. I mean, I'm like, I'm like, I feel like this is the essence of just guys who ultimately are just, dude, we're looking to hang out, man. We're looking to keep it loose and not, not, not overwhelming and insane. We're, we're just hanging out, loose, man. Yeah. That's yeah, all. We just want to keep it cool, man. Keep it casual, man. Have yeah. fun. Yeah, cool. Man. That's right. Calm. Yep. 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 Collected. Cool, calm, collected, as we're dead inside. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hello, welcome back to the Strange Films Podcast, episode 82. Uh, John, you are wonderful, my friend. Thank yep. you for being here. What's up? <laughs> Lucas, uh, Lucas can't join us today because we just had two days of incredible shooting, but... Um, it absolutely destroyed us. It was We're, absolutely intense. It was alive. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we totally got wiped um, shooting the first scenes of Piglet, and <laughs> man, we, we went hard. But yeah, Lucas is still recovering. I, I'm still recovering myself, personally. Yesterday was my really chill day. So, um, But yeah, so he's he's taking it easy today, um, so it's just us three. And um, yeah, how are you guys feeling? I'm feeling great, man. Yeah. feeling incredible, man. I'm just feeling really rejuvenated and sparked after being on that set and just watch, been watching a lot of stuff on my own. Just Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm feeling pretty sparked up. Right on. John O. I'm here. What's your thoughts? How you? F- <laughs> uh, I was not on the set. I just, but I, because I, I had other prior engagements, and I am tired from those, and just from brain stuff and mm-hmm. mental stuff. Life, <laughs> shit. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It gets. Uh, it, it can get to us. I, I get that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's like yeah, the life create a balance thing. Yeah, sometimes life takes a life. Life dominates it. Seems life like. yeah. uh, finds a way. Yeah. Life finds a way I for I sure. To decide the win. I don't, honestly, I think I'm living for that. But I, life, it's like, well, life has to be the side. I think it's an example for everyone. Life has to kind of dominate. Well, I think what the creative side. Sometimes. Well, it's it's kind of for me when it comes to like the life, like the the personal side of my life versus like the creative side of my life. There are those moments where I just want the creative to be full force and take take over, and I don't have to worry about anything. Like I don't want to be distracted by anything. I, you know, a lot of the fun stuff that you can go out and do is like it can be redundant or whatever. You know, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Kind of yeah. stuff, that kind of mentality. But then there's also that side of me that needs to actually break away from the creative side of myself because I get super. Um, I get. I get burnt out in a, in a lot of ways sometimes, you know. It's inevitably anxiety inducing at a certain point. I think it's overwhelming. It's I overwhelming. think it's overstimulating, overwhelming, and I think it gets too much of like a, oh my God, I, I'm never going to be this or I need to be this, like you know. There's a level where it's always going to feel like inevitably like, I, I don't know what I'm doing with myself that, anymore. Yeah. That, that, I think that's the level where it's like, okay, I just got to calm down. And just It's like, and I saw how you did it, like just execute and then just, so I think there's always this come down after the set where it's like, shit, I still don't feel like satisfied somehow. Like I can't explain it. It's almost like no matter what, that feeling kind of does happen. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know what, the, what happened on the set, but it's like, I think your mic's is it on? Hello, hello, hello. Hello. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with your mic. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. I've been possessed by a ghost. (laughs) (laughs) Something. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yours is not picking up for some reason. I just now realized as we're recording our show. But uh, here, go ahead. All right. Yeah. Mic check. Mic check. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I was just kind of thinking about how, um, yeah, like a lot of those sets could be very like, there's always a limit where there's always an inevitable come down, I think, after a set like that, where it's like, it feels like you're sparked on it for a little while, but then it's just like, it's really exhausting. Like, it's like the exhaustion can just catch up to you. And yeah, you just, you have to, you have to recover from something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, hello? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. I think. Cool. There you go. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, switching. Arr. Switching stuff. There you go. <laughs> Cross right. the streams. Cross the streams, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, man, I don't know, something about that whole set, maybe it was just something about the nature of the story you were telling, but I I, I, and I didn't really see a lot of the director photographer like footage, so I just felt like a, a nostalgic buzz being on that set, just kind of watching the whole cr- cast and crew members just unfold. Yeah. Their work. It was just a really, really incredible experience, honestly. Pretty, pretty magical to see it. I think every set yeah. has its own unique story to tell, like, regardless of the script, the plot, it's the environment and the people that are going to be on it, you know, so... Yeah, John, you stepped on for a couple, a uh, few minutes on the first day. Yeah. What was your kind of initial vibe off of everything? There were a lot of folks there, and, you know, I wasn't really, I got there right as everyone was, like, breaking for lunch, so, you know, we took that little hall to where we were shooting, and, you know, it's like that area is definitely great for that sort of thing, but, I mean, the first thing I saw when I came in was makeup on mm-hmm. our star, mm-hmm. and... 
mm, can't really say anything because <laughs> wow it's pretty really gnarly good. it's really good <laughs> pretty gnarly it's really good yeah i know dude it's crazy like i know i can't i can't wait to start releasing those images and uh teasers of it and stuff like that because it's just oh my god it's like it's definitely original and it's definitely like the gnarliest thing I think I've actually shot uh, as far as uh, makeup and stuff goes. But, yeah. No, uh, Shout out to Ryan Smith on that, man. Incredible. Yeah. Ryan Incredible. Smith, dude, he came down and he just absolutely killed it, man. His stuff gets better and better every time. Well, and that's all. That Cody, I, like, I didn't even know what he looked like until the very end of that. <laughs> yeah. He was just in, in character the whole yeah. time. I just <laughs> He was yeah. in that for like – over five hours on Friday and like ten hours on Saturday. Oh, man, I, I heard getting ready. I was like, oh man, probably can't even eat anything right now. Yeah, like, he, he <laughs> was able to he was able to eat, but it was definitely a tough, uh, yeah. a tough little thing there for tough. him. Um, I was like, dude, you're, you're you're about to take up the Grinch mantle here, which is being in makeup <laughs> <laughs> all freaking day. Like, but what was good about that was um. He was very. Uh, first of all, he's a very good sport about it. He like he he's used to being like Dude, creatures totally. and monsters and stuff like that. So he had no problem doing all that. It's a very physical role. So he got like, you know, I knew it was we were asking a lot from him. But the the really the best part about everything was the makeup. Apparently, from what Cody said and Ryan said that uh, well, Cody especially because he was wearing it that it really wasn't that that heavy or anything. It wasn't uncomfortable really to the most part. Like if anything, all the stuff on his skin after so long was drying up all the times and that made his skin real tight and he he could feel that that was the most discomfort he was getting so we always kind of had to you know spray him down and lather him up a little bit you know yeah so but definitely a good good uh good amount of people and but just good teamwork man good a really incredible. great team it was an incredible display of teamwork yeah a really great team um cast crew that is definitely i think one of the top three like teams i've ever had on the set just because everyone was such in a good mood and like with team players and wanted yeah. to help and just great vibes you know. the whole set honestly so. i mean just like it really felt like even though we were just in the background i really felt like we were just a crew and all just went out to the jungle and really did something <laughs> yeah. ambitious like that was that felt so cool yeah yeah so yeah that, that stuff gets like i think i think even as ambitious as something is when you have like everybody on the same page it just feels like comfort about it for some reason there's a know? comfort about it yeah. it's like it's a lot of that, it's like we're gonna get this done yeah like once you're kind of in the moment of it it's, there is a unique comfort about the whole thing yeah you just because you know you're you know your mind's on something that's gonna end up being a big thing later yeah I don't know. it's just yeah it just speaks for itself yeah the rhythm of it for sure it's a rhythm so well uh i don't want to bore anybody here i don't want to get uh, i know we're all a little tired here but anything that you want anything Anything that's exciting? I know you're 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 always the most energy here. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> you're, I know, yeah. you're buzzing right now. Yeah, yeah. You're, I mean you're in the middle of shooting your own project. Yeah, I am. Right? Yeah, yeah, Luke, Lucas and buzzing Lucas on a lot of here, but uh, yeah, yeah, Lucas and I were on that. They were part of my film, bit. also. Yeah, dude, yeah. I gotta say, man, like working with you, John, particularly, I'm like, I, I really just like I found a unique level because a lot of what you're describing on set, like I actually felt that working with with you and Lucas a lot, man. I yeah. felt like I could really connect with something. Like I could really find something in the way you perform. And I, I just felt like really connected with the way you delivered everything and Thanks, just man. how how great you were at acting, man. I really want to do more with you, man. Yeah, it was really neat. It was a short little scene, but it was fun. You know, a little good bit of flexibility, good, good, strong personality, and kind of crazy vibes to lean into. Yeah, kind of going for a crazy energy. Cause I, I really wish of, I saw that. Oh, yeah. it was a cool vibe. I mean, it was a cool project. We just kind of went to Curious Dog and just uh, over the span of a few hours just kind of took, took control of the place. Yeah, with it. We just cool. kind of went between um, their perspective and they're they kind of like, like I'm looking at a bitter perspective and then a beautiful perspective kind of unfolding and I just wanted it to feel like a, I was just almost an awkward, uncomfortable middle ground between those two because I think that's just the way I look at life typically. John, does it ever like when you, because I, 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 you briefly told me a little bit about kind of, you know, your role on Blake's set, mm -hmm. but like, I know that can kind of relate to some stuff that we talk about and things like that. Does that does that kind of maybe release anything for you a little bit? Does it make you feel any better after you do something like a that? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah it does. I, yeah, because I feel like I I just know personally speaking, when I do stuff like that in my my creative work, there is some sort of release that makes me feel like okay well at least i got that out and i realize that's know, what i wanted like, to find because i think you're like then maybe it's a very subconscious note that you tap into but you are kind of the guy i feel like you're looking to you're you're dying to release something like you're very suppressed about something and yeah. and i think i want to find that better with you in future projects i think we i found something that felt great but dude we could totally make that more satisfying for you i think in time like i want you to like what, i want to find what would be fulfilling almost for you to act what yeah, kind of character would, would fulfill you most i uh yeah i definitely like just want to figure the that idea. Out. I mean, I'm I'm not like new new to acting, but I haven't really done any screen acting really. But it's just like I do really like the idea of like taking some kind of like side that it's like 
maybe that's a side that you shouldn't express. Maybe that's a side that you should work through in other ways, and expressing it is only going to hurt people. But when you're doing it for a role and it's just on camera, it's yeah. like, okay, well, you can just do looking that. Looking at the dark side. It through that. Yeah, it's like looking at the dark side. Yeah, trying to be therapeutic for other people who might have dark emotions. It's very relatable to what you are. And just, hey, if you, you're, help, you're there to tell them they're not alone, man. Yeah, that's powerful. That means a lot. And I totally want to be like... I just want to be dressed up in a full costume and be animated, dude. I really just want to get let loose. I want to see you do that, yeah. man. Yeah, you got a loose energy, man. I can totally see that. Well, I get <laughs> shy. I, like, I can totally just, like see you get with makeup, man. Like, kind of just. Go I get crazy. shy about certain things, like on camera. Like, I get shy on camera when it comes to like obviously like filmmaking or something like that. But like podcasts, whatever interviews, whatever. Like, but when it comes to like a, a story, I get shy. Like. I definitely would like to work through that more because I, I, I have been having fun being on screen recently, especially working with you on a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. That looked awesome. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. You know, I would definitely love to do something like that in, in that setting. But until, you know, I would also, if I knew like my face was disguised and I had like a costume and stuff like that, I feel like I could really let loose. And just be super anime and weird and wild, and <laughs> that would give me a little confidence just to be kind of crazy on screen. You know? Dude, so, I would love to see you do that. Yeah, man. yeah, no, and you totally got that. Like, kind of, yeah, like a bit of the Alfred Hitchcock kind of presence. Where I feel like brewing a little bit, where you're just the mystery man who kind of shows up out of nowhere. You're the director, but yeah, you, but hey, you, then you could just be like, the, like any kind of character you want to be, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of well, cameo. I, I want to be pretty well. You're pretty good at being a chameleon. Yeah, I like to. I like to. Hit, be able to dabble in a bunch of different things. Yeah. That's really. I think that's what, what directors are. Like that's, that's why there's so much like around it because you're looking at so many different shades. You know, yeah. it's like throughout the process of the filming that alone, it's like that is like a bunch of different shades of your like subconscious mm -hmm. unraveling. And I feel like yeah. in a lot of ways, just you know, that, like there's a lot going on in there. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's kind of crazy, man. The last like three weeks, we've been on like three different sets. Four, three. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> pretty crazy, <laughs> man. Like, it's, it's getting busy. It's like oh, it's getting just working on stuff. All yeah, the time. it's, it's just like dude, just like left and right. Left yeah, man. Like. I mean, it's it's always fun, but like you you do kind of like oh my god, like well we had yeah we had Lucas's we had you, you know you got yours we got mine over here. It's like you know recently I was on. It's real happens. Everything happens at once. Like yeah, <laughs> and you know and it's you when we have when we know all of these filmmakers and actors that ends up being the case in your local scene where it's like hey you want to jump on this set you want to jump on help out here you want to act here whatever that is so. Yeah, I definitely have been busy the last few weeks, but yeah, and I think again that's a lot of it, man. Sometimes it's just listening to social cues. I think it's just a time and place and energy where it's like, okay, I think it's just playing already. Like people are ready to do, be part of a set like this, and it's just that's sometimes why I'm patient with it. Cause it's like I have the idea, but somehow I just I kind of feel like some actors need to we need a different time and place of of, of just I guess just. Uh, atmosphere in general and the people's perspectives for this that really happen the way I'm looking for it in a yeah. lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, you know, I don't know. It's almost like I'm not. I don't know what I'm looking for out of all this. When you know it, you kind of find it in your actors, and you know how to and you know exactly how to tell them how to bring it out. I, I, I what I've really loved about working with people in this area, it's like especially the ones I really really like to work with. I can write characters for them based off like their their traits and how I know they act and things like that. And that's been a lot of fun, you know. And and also I like to give. People who support me, who really wants to work with me, like chances and want to bring them in the fold and kind of see what they can do and stuff. So, I don't know. It, yeah, it's it's cool, man. Once you start kind of really getting in those circles and pulling your resources as best you can. For sure. Um, let's see. Well, have you had any time to watch or unwind with anything, John, I, uh, or anything like that? A few things. I know you've uh, been kind of caught up with a lot of different um, stuff. L ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna have a. <laughs> A heavy off pod discussion yeah. later, I'm sure. Yeah, we, uh, we're gonna have to. Everyone's gonna be like, uh, oh, I watched a, a horror film. Uh -huh. uh, I, was, I remember when it came out, it seemed really intriguing, and then I didn't really hear anyone talking about it, so I was kind of like, hmm, wonder what the deal with that was. But I went ahead and watched The Lodge. The Lodge. How was that? It's entertaining. Is that the, la the lady in the uh, cabin with her two kids? Yeah. And, yeah, okay. I saw the trailer so, not too long ago. It's got it's shot well, it's acted well, it's got like cool, creepy stuff, but there's just a lot of stuff in the script that is just like, why in the hell would you make that decision? And I don't even mean like characters being stupid for the sake of scares. I mean like the whole setup is like bizarrely like this is very poorly thought out, um, and it's pretty clear from the begin not not from the beginning, but it's just like it's you know how. Midsummer opens and it's just like ex immediately extremely dark. This kind of goes for a similar thing, but it's not it's not as impactful. It's still dark and it is still like I mean like there's it's there's a scene where 
a kid is just crying their eyes out and screaming, she's not going to go to heaven. She's not going to go to heaven. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's that's some rough stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it's 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 fun once you're in there and watching it. But if you think about it, you're like, this shouldn't be happening. This is pretty uh, it's pretty weird. But it's it shows promise. It's it's. It's it's fine. It's solid. It's okay. yeah. I don't want to say a hard recommend, but I also don't want to say don't watch it because it's like it's a little less than two hours, and if you just kind of want something that's got creepy vibes and you're you're willing to kind of suspend your disbelief a bit, it's there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I probably just sounded like I had a stroke just live on podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. It's all good, man. Uh, no, I saw the trailer for. It. I thought it looked okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it looked kind of what you described. Like it looked yeah. atmospherically kind of interesting creepy. and good creepy yeah. that i wanted to watch it but there's something about it i was like i don't know if i'm really sold on this or something but you know um i, I was asked on set uh what um i thought the scariest movies were and i was having a hard time kind of coming up with an answer i did come up with two just because they do creep me out really heavily and one, one's the witch uh yeah. rob reggers and and the other is sinister uh which i don't think you've seen no i've not seen sinister i think sinister is just really unnerving a little bit it's there's just, it's just yeah, creepy there's it, it, yeah like there's that. parts of it that are creepy but uh i was i was curious what you guys thought were actually like super scary movies and i did we did talk about the original texas chainsaw massacre also just because it's just so fucking unsettling you know but <laughs> that's that's a tough one i know it's tough to it's think like so about many yeah movies i watch i'm like i don't watch them because they're scary i watch them because they're fun exactly yeah, yeah, yeah exactly like films that actually disturb you and like haunt you for a long time i mean it's like i always go to like the shining is like a fascinating one i don't know if it actually like is the most fr- like frightening one but it's, mm-hmm. it kind of like fascinates me the most of all horror films but as far as like frightening i always point to like rosemary's baby is maybe one of the that's a good one that actually like that actually is really that one did haunt me too that I, that's and I watched really it in haunting the, film. i watched it in the middle of the day and i was like oh i gotta, gotta do, do something and i think it's because so. that film feels so calming and the, the, the environment feels almost overwhelmingly sane throughout so much of it like especially in the opening moments but then it's like when the insane moments like the surreal like demonic moments happen it actually feels like it's really happening like the way it's paced out yeah it's really disturbing yeah that you, have you seen rosemary's baby it's been a long time okay yeah that ending oh Whoa, that ending God. man it's just, it got i just i'll never harrowing. forget i'll never forget watching that and like i was just like Oh my god! I need to like I, I had to like watch Ooh, something else or yeah, do something. Yeah, I had to shake. Like, it took me a few days to shake yeah, that feeling off. Oh, that, that, that was very yeah, disturbing film. Yeah, every sense of the word. Yeah, it's it's um, yeah, like absolutely like, scary, scary movies is like I think a little bit more tough for me now to kind of grasp onto. Like I used to be terrified like when I was younger uh, of scary movies, and then you know as you get older, you're like oh no, this is just fun. This is really cool. Like this yeah. is I atmospheric. Mean, the thing know? is, it's like it's hard to be scared of ghosts or monsters or stuff like that. Even like crazed killers, it's like it needs to be for me to be really scared. It needs to be in like a thing of like you know, it's the fear of the unknown, or it needs to be very psychological, or it needs to be very real. And I think, like, it's, like, I was going to suggest, like, Hereditary or Midsommar, but, like, the scariest parts of Hereditary and Midsommar, um, I mean, spoilers for Hereditary, if you haven't seen it by now, please watch it, but, like, after the, the car crash scene, that stretch between, like, when that happens to, like, I think, like, the actual funeral scene, it's only a couple minutes, but that stretch is, like, yeah, because it's just, like, he knows, yeah. No one else knows, and you're just you're just thinking about what he's thinking and where his mind's at. And then, on a very similar note, like just the opening of Midsummer and just everything going on there. It's like for me, like act, like you know, actual like grief and dealing with the consequences of death and stuff like that are way more terrifying than monsters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think definitely any sort of realism to it, like where you like, oh, that could actually happen, yeah. or scary things about like like just like. People generally being psychopaths, you know, like well, you I think and that I stuff. We're talking about. I think what makes Texas Chainsaw Massacre really scary for me is like the idea that like this patch of like nothingness in the middle of Texas. It's like anyone you meet is gonna be like, oh, okay, just take him to the cannibals. Like everyone around there is just in on it. Kind of like yeah. that kind of feeling is really creepy too. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I definitely think that. Yeah, that's just unsettling. But I was gonna say Hereditary too because I think Hereditary. Hereditary is like, 
it's 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 a really really fun watch I think in a ways but there's like that moment where it's like the personal stuff that really that's, disturbing. Like, terrifying, it's like it's, I think a lot of disturbing because it's so frighteningly close up on like horrifying things and it's like you get every single detail. The of last the thirty minutes is really what gets me Dude. like actually like kind of creepy. Or Tony like, Collette's ooh, character you know, especially, like, she just really goes through it in that. Yeah, the, is that the mom? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, she's she's ooh. the one. I'm like, oh my god. Dude, like, it's unsettling. She's, like, she's very unsettling. That, that, that bedroom scene where it's like she's just like yeah, she's like right there the whole yeah. time and you're like. It's like it's like if you don't notice it, you're like, "What's going on here?" And then when you notice it, you're like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> you know? Yeah. But then like, yeah, that ah, on, the, oh, on the ceiling. Oh, <laughs> that's so that, insane. That shit is that is that yeah. Is it's just, that's a great film. I've, if I remember correctly, a lot, most of that, a lot of it, majority of it, set like pretty much in that same house. Location. Yeah, a lot so, of it. I mean, is, yeah. Really Which I think it's I think it's cool because like Shining Rosemary's Baby. The, uh, the the dollhouse essentially plays that out too. You know, the, it's, it's the lodge kind of try it kind of it. It's, it feels almost rip off because it kind of tries to do a little dollhouse thing. Oh, and yeah. Whatnot, showing off like, ooh, this is what's going to happen kind yeah. of stuff. And it's it's not to like shift it back there, but do you guys ever watch a movie where it's like, it's fine, but you can tell that like they saw a movie last year. And they're like, quick, we got to add stuff from that movie in mm-hmm. here. Yeah, I can't really think of any examples, though, but I feel like I've, I've definitely noticed that. I mean, there's always probably, I mean, every, every, uh, movie has some sort of you know influence of something you know it's oh, just dude, sometimes absolutely. it's pretty obvious sometimes it's yeah pretty obvious. sometimes it's loud yeah definitely yeah, definitely loud. definitely um It'll be glaringly obvious <laughs> yeah but i think like as far as i don't know like horror movies are always fun though because they can range in different ways but i think some of the gnarliest stuff though is like where i like to land at where it's just like it's fun but it's like it's like brutal like gnarly yeah. kind of like but i don't like too brutal i don't like i don't like to feel like ugh, this is just just disgusting. This, like this is disgusting to a point where it's like, it's not fun. It like it's not fun to watch. Yeah. Like I, that's why I think it. I'm a little on the fence with Terrifier too. Like mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw Terrifier. I saw the first one and that that one kill was like okay. That one's that, yeah. That one okay, is, is is pretty, but it's just enough to because the whole movie is really like I thought was really great and that was just enough of a line where it's like, damn, you crossed that and it's enough to kind of reel back from as well. Terrifier 2 is just, like, way over the top and yeah. kind of really disgusting on certain parts. It's not a particular movie, but it's sort of a concept, and I'm going to be very, very vague about it. But, like, this kind of concept, this kind of thing in horror, I like it a lot because I would see a lot, a lot of, like, Reddit no-sleep stories. I loved those back in the day, and I just really loved this idea. But, like, kind of think about what's going on in uh, Barbarian. That sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. sort of thing gets to me. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I can, yeah, I can see that for sure. There's, yeah, that was that's a good example. Um, I think like there's like a, <laughs> there's like well, I'm kind of laughing only because it's kind of oh the strangers. Well, the strangers definitely is a great. Uh, there's a show. I don't I don't know the name of the show, but there's like a show where it's like there's like underground tunnels that leads from like house to house in the neighborhood or something like that, and I feel like that bothers me in a sense because there is like real life stuff going on in this neighborhood that with my neighbors and I feel like the guy across the street's a serial killer and they all own like three or four of these houses and I'm like and there are all these family members on the street and like no joke across the street like the other day at five in the morning a police shows up ambulance fire truck there's a coroner there's a medical examiner there's all kinds of crazy shit and there's a weird shit that goes on at that house all the time and then it was made me think i was like i wonder if these motherfuckers have like keys all these houses and like you know they could you know i don't know it's because the house across the street people moved in not too long ago and they moved right out and i was like and that house used to be overtaken by a lot of homeless people and the people that own these houses Mm. like were kind of letting them stay there and stuff so it's it's a whole story i'm not going to jump dive into too much but like that whole idea of like maybe people have keys to other houses in this neighborhood or stuff like that and that could like and then the idea of that underground tunnel and that show i was like that's a real thing i feel like could happen in some deranged part of the world and i was like that stuff is scary to me yeah you know? <laughs> it's like so much that's of like, fear material. does kind of boil down to like very very specific things that are unique to each person but there's a lot of commonalities I was watching a video last night from uh, Jacob Geller. He's a great YouTuber, does a lot of stuff on video games. And he was talking about how, like, a fear he always had, like, as a kid that I think a lot of people have is, like, 
when you're in your bedroom and it's nighttime and like, yeah, you're looking at one side of the room and you're like, it's dark and whatnot, but no matter what direction in the room you're looking in, there's always going to be a dark direction in the room that you're not looking at and you don't know what's there. Oy, yeah. And he brought it up because like there was a game that like, a me- that has like a jump scare that kind of takes advantage of that. And it's like so obvious and you see it coming, but it's like so relatable of like, you know, like, I mean, I've, I'm, you know, as a kid, like I want my bed in the corner so I can see right, the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And no, have no spookies jumping out at me. Yeah. There's also that fear, I feel like. I always have, like, a weird paranoid feel like someone's watching me or something like that. Like, that that fear itself I would love to play into a movie because that's just, like, someone's watching you and you don't know it. And like they Do have you to- watch Haunting of Hill House? Uh, that's the first one, right? Yeah, yeah. the first season. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was great. Yeah, how, like, I mean, I need to rewatch it because it's, like, so many people, like, yeah, there's just so many shots where there's just ghosts staring at people in the background. Yeah. You just never notice it. And it's like, I, I, never, I need to rewatch show. it, too. That was a great show, though. Yeah. That was fantastic. But, yeah, dude, that's awesome, man. I think, like, with horror, I think... I think <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Oh, no, it's just... I just no, it's <laughs> like, just, your transitions are always... <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's always that, like, awkward note of, like, I don't know if I should make that, like, no, too too laid back if I want to make it a little enthusiastic. Yeah. I always end up getting enthusiastic. You're good, but, dude. But just, like, get excited about your or just enthusiasm yeah. and just like kind of relating it to maybe what you're seeing and all the in the genre I think I I've always gone for like the really dark psychological kind of horror I, I think yeah. a lot of that's always related a lot in a lot of ways just kind of looking at people just going you're really, I, I've always just loved looking at like chaos and insanity particularly just mm-hmm. really fascinate me a lot and I just like what drives people to all that those mad levels and, and, the, and a lot of horror is I think the best outlet for exploring those kind of things like, oh, yeah because I think I, yeah I just like to see like you know you're also talking about and I think I agree like there's a level of like brutality in film that could be just be so much. I always have to kind of find like, well, if it's gonna be brutal, I kind of want it to like just fully have a reason to be brutal in mm-hmm. a lot of ways, and also be entertaining about it too. Yeah, not be take itself too yeah. seriously either, but just let it be like, you know, here's so just uh, just some everyday people, and then just ho- something otherworldly horrible happen. Hell was brought upon just these people in yeah. a lot of ways. That's why I don't want to watch that movie. Uh, what's a suburban? Story. Uh, suburban story. Is, uh, is that what it's called? A suburban. Dis- uh, Disturbia. No, no. Siberian film or uh, the Serbian, Serbian film. film. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. No, that was all. Style. I've heard that movie is just shock. Dude, value. it was yeah. all shock. Now you had no reason. You watched it? Yeah, I saw most of it. I didn't finish it, but I saw. I've seen enough of it to know. Yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah, that was all. That was all shock. Yeah, I, don't, I don't have no interest in watching. I don't like those kind of movies. Yeah. There's an Italian movie like that called Solo. It was made in the mid '70s. It's literally oh, just yeah. about a bunch of just naked teenagers being tortured brutally. Oh, that was the most grossest movie I've ever seen. Honestly, see, it's like I don't think. Had a reason to exist. That's so weird. That I mean, you know, it wasn't you know, entertaining at all. Just, it was actually I, boring. I think it's so weird, though. Like, I think that's such a like an interesting thing that people have that kind of genre they like or they even like to make. And it's just like yeah. Ugh. people like to do that. So I'm like, yeah. God, yeah, it just feels sick. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah you know, it's like, not inviting about it. When I was a kid, like my parents didn't let me watch horror movies. My mom really hated horror movies and stuff. And it's like I had this idea that like Friday the Thirteenth and Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween are all like these really fucked up mm-hmm. nasty movies and then i watched them when i was a teenager and i'm like oh i mean these are these are creepy they're good horror they're fun but they're uh they're nowhere near I th- like i thought they were like just basically snuff films yeah you know? right <laughs> that's how I, that's how i always remember like those movies especially like halloween and chucky those were my two that i like terrified me the most yeah. um and i just remember always hearing like the music i always heard the the dialogue or like screamings and stuff like that my parents uh, downstairs i could always hear the scary movies being played and like they always had the lights off while they watched it and stuff like that so i'm like up at the top and i'm like oh it sounds it sounds so terrifying you know and they're you know it's probably something really you know like 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 those old classic movies that are actually just just no they're fun yeah they're, they're just fun movies exactly you know? yeah, yeah and i think yeah my perspective on horror certainly has evolved a lot too because you know i think like growing up i, I actually I, I would mostly go for like just kind of like the, a lot of the slasher claustrophobic kind of atmosphere mm-hmm. kind of those so then i think as i got older i think the shining really opened the doors for me is like so i think i saw that expecting it to just be like another slasher and i was like wow that like really just i don't know it just felt very seriously disturbing and very more, all, all the more just fascinating and i think that's what it is it's like looking at things that are terrifying and just i just kind of want to feel fascinated by things that are, are ultimately scary and i think that's what i've always loved out of watching a lot horror of aesthetics is what i'm yeah. all about and I, like aesthetics. Shit. I like yeah i like dark rusty foggy just creepy shit yeah it's like the feeling it feeling something it's like a feeling of atmosphere in a lot of ways like i really think horror is one of the best ways of doing that in a lot of ways um, oh yeah feeling something um just really um yeah just and just being like not beyond disturbed yeah just just feeling like i, I can i've always felt like i could get on a lot of unique like discussions about like characters with you know, exploring a lot of tormented moods in a lot of ways yeah. in movies movies make that so very social yeah horror movies that's what i always say on interviews and stuff is like horror community is like one of the best communi- communities to be in i mean it's just so fun forgiving there's so many different levels and genres to it Seriously. you can be it the, the campiest silliest thing to the most serious you know side of horror and 
there's always going to be an audience there for Dude, you, you know. There's an audience, and people like for just it. like yeah. it's fun to talk about for sure. It but is. they had that Smoky Mountain Terror uh, convention in Kingsport this week, and I really wish I would have been able to go to. I didn't realize it was the same weekend I was shooting Piglet stuff, but um, but yeah, a good horror convention is always fun to go to. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, really is. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, well, we uh, I think in the Piglet stuff we're doing is definitely trying to take homage to like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Friday the 13th and I think we I think we nailed down some of those uh, tones with I saw a lot got. of the Texas yeah. Chainsaw Massacre yeah and that's another one I've been god that's been striking back as one of the best horror films ever made oh, yeah. well, that's definitely. A, such a masterpiece of it I, I think a lot of that uh, kind of gritty perspective but it's really like almost a hangout feeling with the characters until something goes too far I think mm -hmm. that's almost the essence right yeah. there just everyday thing and then it just I think that really is the best horror right there then it just evolves into just completely disturbing realms so. yeah you can't. will never, never be able to turn back from for these characters. Mm -hmm. Usually, usually it's gonna, you know, mark them for permanently. <laughs> the event that happens. If you were in a horror movie, uh, in a real life horror situation, would you be the first to die, or do you think you'd outlast and be the, be the middle, or do you think? I, th I think I'll be in the middle. Oddly, I think Blake somehow could survive. In a you think I'll movie. survive in a horror <laughs> film? <laughs> I think I'd be the guy that does everything right, but ultimately it's like. I'm just not quick enough to get out. I'd be I'd be the second to last. To I die, think probably. I guess that it, sounds about right. Makes me think of that character in Shaun of the Dead that gets torn apart in the end. But he's like I, I think he had a similar kind of personality as well. Uh, it's like very uh, smart, but very lot. But like but occasionally, like something I will happen. Be as insufferable as he was. Though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now John would he he would be like I don't no, remember dude, if he was. He, he you've got all the strategies. You've ha you have all the plans, backup plans, the, the fucking real communication, uh, and everything like that. And you would make it all the way up until the very end until. You're like right out the door. Something that grabs you, and I'm like, no, John. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about the movie Black uh, Christmas. Did you guys see that one? I've never yeah. seen the. I've never yeah, seen either. Great one of those. thriller, great Thanks, thriller. Baby. Yeah, that's a really yeah, the original another, one. Yeah, the original one from. I want to see that one, dude. Really yeah. reminded me of John Carpenter's influence. And I think that was one of the first. I mean, that was the same year as Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That was just another one that hit lands really well. It just has so many great characters where you just do it's so unpredictable where everyone's fate's gonna land. Yeah, and a lot of incredible characters. I've always heard that one's really good. Seriously, yeah, you know, movie keeps out. coming back to me. I can't remember if you recommended it to me or not. Intruder. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. Damn, seen I, that. it wasn't even that. You ever seen that either? No. It's a it's a slasher base in a grocery store. And oh yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, dude, yeah. it's called Intruder, right? I think. I, I think forget it's, what it's called. I think it was called Intruder, but dude, it is it's fucking gnarly. It is a lot of fun. It's yeah, they're like they're like in this big supermarket grocery store kind of style, and and this guy's just like in their like hat. They're all, I, I can't remember how they get trapped in there, or they or they just stay the night there, or they go in there at it's night. It's kind of a weird setup. It's a weird setup, but like when it gets going, it's a lot of fun. The kills are pretty gnarly, and. Um, yeah, it's just like this whole kind of thriller aesthetic in, inside the. It's like made in the '80s and stuff too, so it, it's it's a lot of fun. That's right? what's up. And then uh, the burning. Uh, I know you you like that one, right? I yeah, think. I. Uh, that one's okay to me. I mean, the effects are really good. I recently but. listened to a podcast episode about the burning, which kind of pointed out that like Harvey Weinstein was heavily involved in it, and it was like oh, one of his geez. first movies. And then oh, they started geez. to point out yeah. all the stuff that's kind of creepy because of that. Dang. And it's just like, mm, yeah, I like a lot of stuff in it, but. Um, I mean, I mean it's, I'm not gonna say it's perfect. It's just I, I like a good camp setting for a horror movie. The aesthetics there, yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, but yeah, that's I, I don't know. And then I thought, and then I watched The Prowler re like recently. That was uh, that's another like '80s slasher. It's just like a retired like or like a I don't know. He was like a old Vietnam vet or something like that. But he's dressed up and the killers the kills on that was gnarly as well. But um. But yeah, just some of the, you know, the plot's always a little yeah. half and half. I think another theme that kind of takes me to is like survival instincts. I think I like to look at scenarios that brings people into raw survival instincts mm -hmm. one way or another. And I think that's a lot of what horror can bring out also. Because mm -hmm. I mean, people really do get, get up there. And again, that's like looking at anxiety. Like people can like shift in a lot of ways whenever they're like on their feet. Like I was like, man, you could, you, know, you can, you can almost turn into a superhuman again a little bit whenever you have the heat of anxiety on you. You know, it's like a moment I always think about when it comes to survival instincts is, um, I forget where it is. I think it's like season four or something in uh, the walking dead and it's a scene where like rick and carl are like 
they're like some gang finds them and corners them and it's this situation like how are they fucking gonna get out of this and i think rick just straight up goes and bites the guy's neck oh, and just yeah. rips part of his neck off and yeah I, I remember like the discussion thread was like there were people like that's crazy that's crazy and there was a guy who's like if you had kids you'd understand like if you were in that situation you'd be like yeah fuck it i'm biting this guy's neck i always have that worst case scenario in the back of my mind when i'm with augie in places especially around like people and stuff and i always guess kind of like what what would i do if someone came up and was like trying to like take my kid or something like that i would fucking rip their fucking face off like i know like i yeah. know i would like i don't Survival give a damn like it's man. it's just one of those things that like especially when you, yeah when you have kids it, it really is like you just that's why i'm always like hold my hand buddy like you just have to have at all perception all the time and it's like I could give a shit sometimes what happens with me, but nothing can happen to him. Yep, yep. It's like kind of that's, that's the mentality. Of that. yeah. yeah, but yeah. <clears throat> oh boy, we we really should have had Lucas on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see where to take it. Do you want to uh, talk more movies? Well, what you got, man? What you got, Blake? Yeah, you, you're you're the one. Uh, you you've got the most energy here. Oh, I yeah, dude, man, that's the thing, man. When you do a shoot, man, especially uh, with yeah. life in, in between, like well, it, just, yeah. I'm just. It gets it gets really. It takes a few days to recover. Dude, I can't even absolutely. imagine doing that. The fucking ten day shoot I'm doing in September, dude. I'm gonna oh, be I'm man. gonna be dead. You're gonna be dead, man. <laughs> It'll be so much. Literally, I'll be I'll be like, kill me, just, <laughs> kill me. Yeah, man. I, honestly, I've just been sorting out through this movie. I've just been watching over this weekend, which is just a particular dose of nostalgia. And I think that set like mi mixed with it perfectly. Like, it was kind of building up beforehand, and I think just being there was like somehow it met it perfectly. So mm -hmm. I think. I've just been, I've been going through a lot of watching a lot of movies. I, I kind of I really caved in and watched like a bunch of movies Jeez. yesterday. I just seriously felt like it. I was well, yesterday was a good on. day. It was a nice rainy day. Seriously, we got we got blessed with the great weather on Friday and Saturday, we and did. it was seriously. just total shit show, shit show on uh, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I started with watching a film called Nostalgia that was made in the early '80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna be more on the nose, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, it's almost the same. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, beautiful movie, man. I mean, it's just about a, <laughs> pretty much literally about a guy who just kind of meets with this whole family, and then they just they turn out to bring out all kinds of suppressed memories in him. So I was like, okay, I wasn't, I didn't expect it to land that significant for me. So I, right. I got me in the mood all weekend. Um, then I watched Richard Linklater's Hitman, which was okay. I I, I see the buzz about it. I'm I'm buzzing that it's getting popular, but I, I thought outside of the main character, the script was just okay. I think it was really going trying to be like a Billy Wilder kind of thing, but I don't think it fully landed exactly. It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix okay. right now. It's worth checking out. You guys might see more in it than me. I, I really could see you guys maybe seeing something else. And I, and I some Linklater. Dude, I, I mean, I love Linklater. Oh, yeah. You guys totally remind me of like Linklater vibes in a lot of ways. Like, the hangout vibes. Yeah. And I do, yeah, I think we all got a little bit of Linklater. Oh, in yeah. This. You <laughs> know what I was so. thinking about recently? I was thinking about that scene in Dazed and Confused where they're like smoking pot in this guy's room and then the parents like knock on the door and he's like, oh, quick, blow it away. And I'm like, <laughs> you're just gonna smoke pot in your bedroom while your yeah. parents are home. You're just gonna do, like, the boldness of like movie stoners just confounds me like they just do not give a shit i had a moment like that in, in two moments like that in uh like when i was like 18 essentially but uh we one was so stupid because i went over to my buddy my buddy's house and for some reason out of all the nights we usually would go outside and go smoke and this re for, for some reason tonight he was like ah, we're just gonna smoke in my basement or downstairs you know and and it'll be fine. Like we and the bath. It was. It's when it's like a three story house, but it's not really like a huge distance. It's like when I say that bottom story is like five steps down into like the basement kind of deal. Like that's how it was. The bathroom was in there, and we smoked in the bathroom a fat ass blunt. And it was just like within within like five minutes, you know, his parents were like, "What the hell are you guys doing?" <laughs> you know? I was like, "What?" And he was like. You guys are smoking weed downstairs, and it's like it's literally in our bedroom. Like it's coming upstairs, and I got kicked out. It was twelve thirty, one o'clock in the morning. They kicked me out, and uh, he got in so much trouble. I'm pretty sure he had to go live with his grandmother for like eight months or something like that. But uh, yeah, I had to go home, drive home in the middle of the night. And I was so stoned and freaked out. But then I remember another time I was at my house, and I was rolling up a blunt in my room, and you know my room was probably like the size of this, and uh, all the weed was out on my desk and everything, and my mom opens the door, and she's like, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, nothing. But I for, I didn't even realize that weed smells like really, especially dank weed, just smells like it fills the room. And I'm just sitting there like trying to hide 
a, like an open, openly fresh, you know, bag of weed and a blunt lay, laid out. <laughs> and I was like, I think back, back at that moment later in my life, I'm like, my mom totally had to smell like what was going on. Like a whiff of that was like, just looking at me like, what's going on? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, dumb. Just being dumb kids. You know, I think it reminds me like one of the funniest things just in comedy in general is when like a character is trying to hide something and you can tell that they just, they do not give a shit what the consequences are they can't be caught it's so funny <laughs> it's so funny if like you know because you were talking about that and my first instinct was like imagining you just like bundling it all up and opening the window just chucking it out there or something or or you know the people who are like i got these drugs and they're like all right and they just shove them up their ass well because <laughs> there was another time in college where i got so what i said sh- sh- you take drugs and shove oh, no. them up your ass and then you start this <laughs> no. story so i'm very i'm paying attention no 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 nothing <laughs> up my ass but i i, I got yeah. so stoned i got <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I got so high, I was paranoid, and I thought the cops got. I thought no, I called the cops. I called the cops, and I and the cops were coming. And then I got so scared, I flushed the weed, all the weed I literally bought like two hours beforehand down the toilet. <laughs> and it was like, like I got so paranoid, I thought people were gonna co- were coming after me, and I called the cops on myself essentially uh, about like I was like, there's people coming up, you know, outside my door. Da da da. No, no, no one there. It, it was like. And, uh, and they had to like talk to me like outside. They're like, what's going on? I was like, and my girlfriend at the time was like, no, it's just, he's just a little out of it or whatever. Like he's having an anxiety attack, all these things. And they're like, okay. And they left. And yeah, I just flushed all that weed down the toilet and like, <laughs> just was that, that was my worst moment I've ever been paranoid. Like, yeah, that was, that was pretty, pretty rough. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. pretty, 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 paranoid pretty rough. Say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's another thing. Man. Reflect a little more on the horror thing. I think paranoia is another looming word. I love, I love to explore paranoia to yeah. moods in a lot of ways like that. Yeah. But yeah, I think, I feel like. I feel like definitely I'm gonna have to do some sort of I gotta do some funny stuff, comedy stuff or something. You got right? it, man. To get, you got to get it, man. some of this horror <laughs> stuff out of like Seriously, to get dude. all that serious tension out. You got the uh, comedy, uh, man. Uh, to push aside because uh yeah, man, I need to laugh some more. Seriously, dude. And I, I just see, I think that's just really the level I see where a lot of just your films incorporating into also. Just more of a sense of, increasingly a sense of humor. Yeah, well, it's like, I just know how much you want the hangout vibe. You really want the loose. Yeah. I think comedy is a huge uh, secret weapon to allowing a lot of that. Yeah, I think it'd be good. I, I think I'd have a lot of fun with that. And the comedian even, actors, you know, yeah, people and, are funny. And even um, just different different like moods in general like I, I i told you the other day like i rewatched the apartment oh, and it's a perfect movie just, it is an Such absolute, a masterpiece. yeah that's my favorite by Billy wilder now it, it is i think it's my well sunset boulevard so I think, just so because close. it's a little i like i like the darkness in that one a little bit more but um the apartment is just like that perfect you know subtle you know like that both approach of light and darkness I it, think. it's and, a perfect balance and yeah. um but yeah i, I watched that time. movie and it felt so cozy to watch and i was just it, it's a perfect movie and it was comforting i was like man i just want to do something like that too that just really just kind of gets in the feels and, seriously but some yeah some well yeah it. makes me think i mean like complexity you, to it exactly exactly man it, like sound of you and me makes you think of that drama perspective that you have i think you did that yeah and i feel like yeah like yeah I, i'd love to see you i'd love to see like a revised take on you doing something I, like I, indie drama like yeah, that like I mean, in the apartment kind of perspective and i have that script uh, uh, that I've been working on that's very much more of like the Paul Thomas Anderson kind of style and a drama film to it. But, you know, it's, you just you get caught up in what these projects that you're working on, the opportunities that come up. And it's, it's like, time, it's like yeah, when yeah. do I when do I even get to do that? But I mean, it, it's in me. I'm ready to do it. I really would love to well, do that's it. That's what's always what shuffling, man. I, I think a lot of it is like sometimes you have all these ideas in your face and you just want to conquer all of them so much. Mm-hmm. that It's like, yeah, like I, I've had a really big time. I think that's what I needed to acquire over the past few years. It's like sometimes you feel that way and it's like, you want to, but it's like, man, it, it could realistically take a long time to get to that. Yeah, I always like to tell people it's not, it's not if, it's, it's not, when. It's, it's not, and it's not over. It's just, it's just a back burner until the time is right. And sometimes mm-hmm. only you really know that. Yeah. But yeah, for sure. Um, um, yeah. So we've got a few months to really kind of, I don't know, do our own little thing until I, I'm super busy up, you know, in September and moving forward with that with Piglet. Yeah, but. Seriously. So, you know, I'd like to I'd like to see if we can maybe do something fun, you know, something a little bit cabin. more. Huh? Oh, well, you're talking about movies, but, 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 you know, we should still get that cabin. Cap- oh, dude, that's what we really need. We yeah. really need the cabin, we should man. Film, we, just, yeah, man. we should film, like, a loose hangout movie out there, man. Honestly, just get We just serious. need to go out there and just, like, forget the world for two Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> forget for the real. Yeah, yeah, we need to, like, we need to fucking night do a nice like hike go out and that's just prowl prowl the town a little bit Chuck come our back phones into the river yeah yeah, yeah. Well, maybe don't go that far but 
<laughs> that would be fun. I just smash a phone, but like they're following us. <laughs> they're tracking us. <laughs> I got another phone call. Um, no, the cabin. That cabin does sound really cool, man. We need to start looking at that. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, that's a good thing too. It's like sometimes you just need a break from reality for a little bit. Uh, I know. Yeah. I know we've all talked about. It. I know you need it. A so lot, much of it too is sometimes it's just like it's nice when you wake up and you see something different instead of just the same spot that you sleep in every night. Yeah, that is, that is that's definitely true. That's why I like to take trips so much. Um, just kind of get a break from the dude. Scenery. Get a fresh ice. That's always been an appeal to me, and I think that's a lot of why I hike so frequently because I think I've had this from a very young age. Like there's something of a nature calling maybe inside where it's like I I, I just somehow feel way better about just my uh, myself if I feel like I've just been out in nature for a little while I've kind of romped around a lot mm-hmm. as opposed to just yeah like because I think like sitting aside I feel like I'm suppressing something but I can just hone, I don't know I just hone into my imagination a lot better that way I just feel like I don't know sometimes somehow storytelling I'm a lot more uh, intrigued by storytelling whenever I'm in that state of mind as opposed to being stuck in a building for a long time yeah yeah I think I can figure that out I later. was I was pathetic out in the uh, in the woods this weekend <laughs> I, was oh. like, I was like uh, well first of all I got there I got bug spray for everybody right and and I'm like all right, I'm going to uh, like I, I was. We were just about to go to our first set to start shooting everything. I was like, all right, here, everyone, here's Bucksbury. So I took it and I was like, whoosh, like all over me, and I like I covered my face, I put it on my face, and everything. And everyone was like, what in the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, I'm putting Bucksbury on. They're like, you don't need that much. You just need a little. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And then all of a sudden, my lips got numb. My skin started feeling real oily and, and thick and everything. I started feeling real weird. And I was like, oh, shit. I, I, I was like, I didn't know. I was like, I thought you just, it's like sunscreen or something. You had to yeah. throw a lot on you. They're like, no. And so I, I fucked up on that. And then, like, when they were, uh, when we had to build the campfire, I don't know how to build campfires, apparently. I almost put out the whole campfire after yeah. we got it really going. and Because I, I was like, oh, yeah, here's more wood. I threw it right on top. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I'm a city guy. I like mm-hmm. I like I like cities and ground and concrete. That's, like, that's why we keep Lucas around. Yeah. <laughs> I know, he was like he was like move. I was like okay. I'm sorry. I was like I'm gonna stand over here. I was like, <laughs> Uh, dude, we had to fight through ticks and all yeah, kinds yeah, of there shit. was some stuff yeah. in there, man. I, 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 I brought some shorts. I was like, oh, I ended up switching the sweatpants. I yeah, definitely needed I had a tick on yeah. my leg. I found uh, Friday night after we shot, but uh, and yeah, there was uh, there's sun and yeah, everything, were the weather. I was sweaty. You no, know, you mentioned to... bugs and mosquitoes and stuff. I uh, I was house sitting for my neighbor, and he has a beautiful, beautiful yard. And I was just sitting out there trying to enjoy myself. And uh, I'm just gonna read off a text I sent to my friend. You know, controversial take, but I fucking hate mosquitoes. Just trying to vibe in my neighbor's beautiful backyard, and these flying little Dracula ass fuckers are absolutely <laughs> devouring me. To which she says, get yourself some bug spray, homie. And I said, I am using two different kinds, and these bitches must have evolved to resist them. It seems to help a little, though. Two different types of bug spray. One's, you know, the kind where it's just like, ah, it's just water and some, you know, essential oils that, are, that smell like things they hate. And the other one's like the chemical shit and I used both of them and I was still getting devoured alive like it's kind of hard to tell but like I do have a bunch of little red spots I, all over my legs because it's like they absolutely ate me the fuck up I've got them all over my ankles right now it's ridiculous uh, yeah it's ridiculous it's just like what do you want yeah. <laughs> what do you want actually I was, I was thinking about mosquitoes last night because yeah I've got a bunch of them on my, on my legs also from this weekend but uh, I saw a mosquito fly on me I flicked it off or whatever and I was like is it I was like is our skin very soft or are they have very sharp little mouths so i was yes. like how does that i was like i was like man how do they just get in there and just fucking suck you all up man I, was like, and I think it was was i think it's like specifically it's like their saliva like kind of like i think it makes it easier for them to get to your blood and that saliva is what makes it itch and i'm like you know what have my fucking blood it's the itching that bothers me yeah i mean don't give me west nile virus or any of that shit but like yeah, that kind of grosses me out when you think about mosquitoes. It's like, if like a mosquito was in this room, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go to you, and then I'm going to go to you, yeah. and I'm going to go to you, and they're just transporting yeah, blood everywhere. everywhere. You know? it's yeah. like, yeah. They poke me first, now you've got some Something I've realized, I think bugs are neat <laughs> and cool and interesting, and I like looking at them and observing them, but if I'm minding my own business and I feel a bug on me, I'm going to freak the fuck I out. I did, dude. That was me. Uh, Saturday night, uh, one of the last few shots we were getting, it was like pitch black. Uh, I was standing on a big stump to get the la- get this angle of Cody and, and Jordan, and <laughs> fucking, I feel something just 
lifted it like right up my leg, and it was yeah. like it was fast. And it was and that it was all over. And I said, I don't know what it is. Get it off me! Somebody get it off me! I had the, I had the black magic rig on my shoulder, oh my and I was like, Get it off of me! <laughs> and 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 uh, someone came up behind me and like brushed it off, and I was like, Thank you. I was like, Oh my god! It's just like when you just feel that, it's just like this heebie jeebies, man. Yeah, like, man. yeah, it's just like we saw this giant ass beetle yeah. with the. the I don't even know what it's called, stag but beetle. the yeah, stag beetle. Right. That's right. Of course, Lucas just picks it right up. He's like, "Oh, look at this little buddy!" <laughs> like, yeah, to get that thing away from me. I'm like, get it away from me. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, I don't. From a distance, I, bugs are cool and fine. They're really neat. But don't put it next to me. Don't let it touch me. I don't want any part of it. I really don't. Um, yeah, but we found all kinds of nature stuff out there. They had a this really really beautiful like moth it was giant uh, Lucas found that we had the snake Bob the snake that literally blessed us with his presence as soon as we got there and he was ended up being in the movie uh, poor birdie there was a there was a dead bird on set a real bird that was unfortunate but um, yeah snakes and worms and bugs and beetles and blah just yeah that's what you get when you're out in the in the, the trenches yep yep Mm-hmm. You never know what'll hit you next out there. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'd rather, I guess it'd be like that. And then, you know, I remember Lucas telling me about, about a story about coyotes in in that area. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't last, we remember we were getting the center blocks and the yeah. pitch black, dude. I was like, I really hope there's not anything in these fucking woods. That, no, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't want a coyote to be running up on me or, <laughs> or anything scary. <clears throat> You're kind of a psycho, Blake. You, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, no, dude, no, I'm serious. It was, it was so funny, dude. Awesome. So we had, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it was so funny though, because like we had these lights set up for the scene, but everything else was pitch black around it. Could not see a damn thing. And it was me and Cody and Jordan, I think, and we're waiting and we're waiting for everyone to get back to set so we can finish the scene out. And we hear someone coming through the 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 field, and it's like it, it's pitch black. And I'm joking with Cody. I'm like, yeah, I hope there's not a real pig out here. You know that. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, hey, who is that? No answer. We're all like, hey, hey, who is that? Is that Co- or is that a Corey or Ryan? I'm like, no answer. I'm like, seriously, who is that? And we're like, because we want to, you know, and then. It just we just kept hearing closer and closer and closer, and it was like, "All right, well, we have a piglet out here. You better." There's a real piglet, and then like, and then Blake emerges from the shadows. Hey guys, I was like, <laughs> and I was like Blake, why didn't you say anything? I had no idea you were talking to me. I thought I, th- I thought you were like on set. I thought it was like a set <laughs> conversation. Like, I thought you were in character. I was like, Blake, why didn't you say anything? You're like, oh, I was afraid I, I was afraid to interrupt the yeah. set. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you fucking psycho, dude. I was like. <laughs> Like Maybe I wanted to add more attention. To yeah, this. yeah, definitely built it, dude. Awesome. I was like, bring the real piglet. <laughs> yeah, I'm the real piglet here. He's the real piglet. <laughs> oink, oink, motherfucker. Oink, oink. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no makeup. But I think that's why I don't want to go camping out in the middle of the woods. I mean, dude, it's anxiety yeah, inducing. Yeah. Well, I saw a video on TikTok about some guy camping <laughs> by himself. He recorded the whole thing, and then he was out in the middle of wherever and he was camping it's pitch black he's like i hear people outside my my tent and and then he looks and he sees sh- silhouettes of people outside his tent and he's like hey i see you he's like i see you get out of here and it's like he he was like zipping back up he was like trying to get his stuff he's like i don't I fuck this and like they start poking at his tent and stuff and like freaking him out you know i obviously that could have been a stage thing but like he he was like he looked absolutely terrified and he got out and he was like running he was like running and he felt he heard them behind him and stuff like that and he was just like totally fucking terrified. And I just thought that would be the most horrifying experience ever. Like you just never know there's psychopaths out there, or homeless people or whoever want to fuck with you, you know. So Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Or nature, of course. Yeah, so. nature. Yeah. It's a force. force. Bigfoots, <laughs> cryptids, man, you know. It's like a force to be reckoned I get with. super I, ah, yeah, I don't know, man. Darkness and woods and stuff. Really, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, like yeah. it. I don't like Dude, it. Dude, seriously. Yeah, I'm the same, man. I always grew up with the real phobia of like going out. Maybe now I think I, maybe it's a little bit of that Batman influence, but maybe I think I like to go out to those places and feel like, just feel like horrified almost. And they just, all right, now I'm, I'm, I'm kind of conquering something. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, the logic is going here. Batman became Batman because he's afraid of bats. Does that make you Hike Man? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. 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 Make my last name Hike instead. Does that make me Dying Alone Man? <laughs> dying Alone Man. <laughs> oh, dying no, alone dude. Man. <laughs> 
Uh, just call me Hike, man. We'll call you Dying call Alone. You the, the hiker, for the sure. Hiker? What, uh, what's your name in all this? I don't know. I mean, hey, you're you, man. You already could, got it. You know, I, I do know there have been, like, several murders on the Appalachian Trail, and it's just like, hiking is cool and rad and stuff, but then it's like, oh, yeah, it's also fucking dangerous. <laughs> yeah. You get yourself to a 127-hour situation. Yeah, no, really. That's the, so cool. Stuff like that, just like one false... If you're especially on like a steep thing, a climb or something like that, and like one misstep, you know, you're falling, you hit rocks or something like that, you're fucking hurt. Turn on you're back by like the movie, like in the, like the last episode, man. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Bell's episode, man. Because I've I, I been caving as always, but no, dude, fuck caves, man. Okay, that's, 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 so, that's so anxiety inducing. <laughs> Chris Bell, I mean, I, my hat's yeah, off to you. That's offered going down there and doing right. all that. I, I wouldn't. I, I couldn't. Like I couldn't. I don't like caves. That's so I don't that's... like, uh, yeah, woods at night. Uh, anything like i don't like deep waters <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah just anything like that yeah yeah and i don't like the desert at night either yeah I, there we go that's so interesting in, so it's like isolated auto. places at night hit you in a certain way in well general. i was talking to uh jennifer about the desert thing at night and we were like we're, we were talking about how we were staring out in the desert at night and it's like so horrifying for it, you want to only look at it for just a moment and then look away because you don't want to stare too long in case you do see something. And it's like because it's like it feels like it doesn't want you to look out there. Yeah. It's like, you know, same thing with like woods, like dark woods, like even, you know, my backyard is nice and spacious and stuff like that. But at night, you, it's pitch black at down at the bottom of all those trees and stuff. And I always, you know, I'll be looking out there in the middle of the night and I'm like, for some reason, I don't want to look, keep looking because it's like in case I see like a figure just kind of walking around or something like that it's like i shouldn't have saw that yeah. i don't want to see that and now i'm haunted for my life you know <laughs> like i'm haunted for the rest of my life so same thing that's how the vibe i got in the desert it's like i didn't want to look out too long yeah i was like if i saw something out there it would literally haunt me to my core for the rest yeah. of my life yeah <laughs> like, yeah pretty much i don't like that so yep yep i'd rather be living in the unknown yep so, and, <laughs> and you know fantasizing about you know fun scary shit <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much i totally get that mm-hmm yeah uh, yeah. well, I guess I can clap. Yeah, you let it, like you wrap it up movies. here, Blake. Like, five more movies to cover. See if we can lead us to any interesting conversations. <laughs> five more movies. Okay. Five, five more movies. Five <laughs> five <laughs> movies. I wish I had. I, I wish. I, honestly, yesterday was a great day. If I if I could have just laid, you know, vegged out and watched movies all day. That's my way. Yeah, no, I just veg yeah. out. And I, I, I'll typically like write and do some other stuff too. But I just like to always have movies on in the background. Which Perkins points. yesterday for breakfast? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it was one of those things. You walk in, they were like the super nicest people, and they're like, manager was like, "Hi, welcome." Da, da, da. And then as soon as I sit down, it's like the manager comes by, and they're like, "How's everybody doing today? You having a great day?" Da, da, da. And like, it was like, and I, I even when they walked away, I was like, "That's a manager, you know? That's a manager coming around and like making sure your their guest is good. That's great." Then have a server who just looks like they're hungover and totally does not give a shit. Uh, I ordered a simple, pretty classic, great skillet breakfast there. Came out not what I ordered, and then had to get sent it back. I was so delirious. I was kind of like, whatever, I'm fine. Just bring it, you know. And comes uh, comes back, and it was still wrong. It was like it was missing the cheese. It was uh, not scrambled eggs. It was over easy, which I have no problem with over easy, but I wanted scrambled. And it was like, and then I took my bite, and I was like, this is just, it's not it. I don't want it. This is not very good. And and then of course that server was like all all that server did was you want a, like a free muffin or anything like that. And I'm like no, I want this fucking taken off my bill. I want that nice manager that came by here and they come by and check on my table. <laughs> like, but uh, yeah, my my breakfast was a little spoiled last yesterday. Yeah, man. I don't know how that came about. What were you saying? Go like? sometime. Oh yeah, yeah. I was going to go some more movies. I saw. Yeah, I saw one called Stalag Seventeen. Uh, yeah, that's that. the movie. I know we've been talking about wanting to watch. That. Yeah, that was a great one, man. Yeah. Billy Wilder behind it all. Just kind of a great sort of just like hangout movie. Just guys getting sort of comfortable with each other, but also yeah. just adjusting. Just yeah, I feel it's like a war movie. Really it's a war movie. Yeah. Oh, it's like not like really in the trenches, but just kind of more like a behind the scenes kind of mm. war film. Which I find those are some of my favorites. Where it's like it's just it's just like, again very subtle. Just it's just kind of everything around it. This guy's just kind of breaking. Free. Like I don't know, just it's just kind of it's just very freeing in a lot of ways. <laughs> that mean, I, 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 I try not to spoil it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hear that movie. Um, great in it. Same guy, Billy. Some type of love art. Yeah, Billy, Billy Wilder. I, I always hear that movie as a recommendation for his filmography. So yeah, I recommend it. Yeah, yeah I've never seen it. I always heard a lot of people tell me that's like their favorite one. Like, yeah, a lot of people I like, grew up on that. I had a lot of power to a lot of people. What, what year was that? Nineteen fifty-three. So that was like oh, three shit. years after, yeah, Sunset Boulevard. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, William yeah. Holden again. And that, oh, I love William Holden. He's really one of my favorite actors. Is he of the all main time. guy in Sunset Boulevard? Yep, sure. Oh, cool. yep, that guy. I like and him he, a lot. Yeah, dude, he was also in a movie called Network. Have you ever seen that one? Mm-mm. Recommended, man. That's one of the. That was one of the. 
I think Paul Thomas Anderson's biggest influences of all. It's basically just this very satirical dark comedy of just this guy going insane. So he just starts to go on the news, just kind of going with all these insane ramblings. And then he's like top guy on the host. And then he starts to feel like seriously depressed and seriously insane. And it's like everyone's just, but but he's getting everyone so many ratings and so many so many things that they just they just kind of keep going with it anyways. Huh. Just follow it till till the end. He kind of just pulls this kind of sacrifice. And just yeah, I, I can't say anymore. Yeah. But okay. All right. It just kind of goes insane though. Yeah. <laughs> I think you'd really love that. I like that. Yeah, yeah man, it goes I completely like insane. I like the sound of that. Oh, yeah, man. Mm-hmm. All of the insanity. Well, <clears throat> yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, man. And, uh, yeah, honestly, I've been buzzing a lot on like, a Mad Max you, movies. Uh, and you watched Godzilla Minus One, dude. Dude, I did. Man, yeah, I love it so much. Yeah, yeah we I talked about that in the last one. I need one, to rewatch man. it now that it's on Netflix. I know. I almost I almost was uh, yeah, ready to I'll rewatch it last night. I'd be so down to revisit that. That was perfect. That's it was a great movie. It might be like one of the best monster films I've ever seen. Oh, dude, yeah. Do you think it's your favorite Godzilla movie? Do you think it's. I mean, yeah. But I haven't seen like a ton of them. I mean, I've I'm, seen like I mean, I'm the same. I've seen the American ones, and then I've seen the original, original Japanese one, and yeah. then that's kind of it. Yeah, I need to see Shin Godzilla. I do and then too. there's there's like a smattering of some of the old ones because I know like there's so many of them. Like there's there's listicles, there's videos of like here's the ones that are actually worth watching, and it's like yeah, some of those I want to watch just for the novelty of just like I just want to see some dudes in a big rubber suit fighting, you know, but mm-hmm. some of those are like, should I put that on while I like do something, you know, yeah, that kind of thing for sure. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up here. Um, for those who are listening or watching, we do appreciate it. Uh, thanks for uh, sticking with us today. We, uh, we definitely have a little bit of low energy, um, just being tired and everything. Lucas is, uh, I mean, he was so wiped at, he, he, he deserves a good rest. He worked very, very, very hard this weekend. Uh, amazing, amazing DP work there. So my um, hat's off to Lucas. Um, we appreciate you guys, and we'll catch you next week. Um, hopefully I can get some movies under my belt this week. Yeah, I, need, I definitely need a good movie stretch this weekend uh, if I can. Uh, but with that said, we'll, uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Until next time. Later.